So welcome back guys this is Dr. Ajinka here and today I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the nasal cartilages. Now what I have here for you guys is a 3D model and I'm going to teach you the 3D orientation anatomy and the relationship of each and every nasal cartilage uh, and its orientation to each other and the relation of it to the nasal bone, the frontal process of the maxilla and the maxillary bone itself. So before I do that, I want to show you something. Uh, now you can become a member on my channel. And what you have to do is just go to a YouTube app or a browser and click the button join over here, which would be right next to your subscribe button. And you can get a monthly subscription pack. And what you can do is gain access to all these surgical videos I have uploaded over a few months and uh, a lot of surgeries different endoscopic ear surgeries sinus and fest surgeries and skull based surgeries along with different skull based theory lectures as you can see on the screen right here these are all specific to members only and in these surgeries i have explained in detail step by step uh, simple steps of how you can do a surgery and this will be like really easy for the beginners so also if you have any query you can just directly approach me on my Facebook profile. You can just directly leave me a message and I'll be surely happy to reply back to your queries on my Facebook page. So this is my Facebook page and uh, that's it. So moving on to the topic of today will be the anatomy of the nasal cartilages. So to begin with, uh, on either side of the midline septal cartilage, we have the huge triangle shape uh, lateral process of the septal nasal cartilage so you can see this is a triangle shaped lateral cartilage which is very adjacent to the nasal cartilage and directly below the frontal bone and um, the second one would be the uh, quadrilateral shape on the uh, lateral view but in actual it is actually a differently oriented triangular cartilage having a medial crura and a lateral crura as well so that's nothing but the greater or you can see the major alar cartilage also called as the lower lateral cartilage and be exactly behind that or you can see the posterior to the uh, major alar cartilage we have got this uh, minor alar cartilage which is also called as the lesser alar cartilage so this is a basic orientation of the cartilages which you see on the lateral aspect of the uh, the on either side of the nasal septal cartilage in the midline but in addition to it we also have a lot of fibro fatty tissue in the inferior aspect uh, which is just below to the uh, the major and the minor alar cartilages also we have a lot of small multiple accessory alar cartilages uh, accessory cartilages which are present between the uh, lateral process of the cartilage and the major alar cartilage which connects these two to be in proper connection and the fiber fatty tissue is a dense connection of net uh, dense connection of uh, fibrous and fatty tissues which is present all over this area which connects uh, actually the major alar cartilage to the frontonasal process of the maxilla and in between we can encounter a lot of four to five minor alar cartilages which are present and dispersed throughout in the fiber fatty tissue so basically the role of the fiber fatty tissue is to connect the major alar cartilages to the frontal process of maxilla and in that fiber fatty tissue area we can see a lot of you know four to five actually to be precise the minor alar cartilages dispersed throughout so along with that we have the accessory cartilages which i spoke about some time back so this is a proper orientation on the anatomy of the the cartilages and we all know that in the midline if i just zoom this if i remove the uh, if i remove this uh now i can see we have the frontal process on one side and i've removed the frontal process of the opposite side so that we can see the interior of the uh, so if I just zoom this and remove this bone over here, we can actually see the entire we can actually see the entire uh, bony structure of the septal cartilage septum as well as the cartilaginous part. So the anterior one third of the nasal septum is formed by the cartilaginous, which is present in the midline. And either side of the midline, we have these three sets and accessory set of the 
uh, cartilaginous of the nose. So this is a basic orientation. Now, if I turn the uh, 3D model uh, in a superior direction, we can actually see that in the midline, we have the cartilaginous septum and immediately attached to it, loosely attached to it on either side is the medial crust or you can say the medial crura of the uh, the major alar cartilage okay so this together on either side along with the midline nasal septum which is formed by the uh, the cartilaginous part in the midline together forms the nasal septum in the midline so this together is considered as the nasal septum in the midline and not just this thin part of the cartilage over here Okay, so this is the quadrilateral cartilage which we see because it is roughly quadrilateral in shape and along with the medial crust on either side of the, uh, the quadrilateral cartilage we this together consider as the nasal septum in the most anterior part. And this forms the alar region at which we keep our endoscope in uh, uh, the support for the endoscope in our endoscopic fests on skull based surgeries. And the other thing we have here is the lateral crura. If I show you the lateral part, this is the lateral crura. And in a superior view, we can see clearly the lateral crura uh, being on the lateral aspect and moving towards the frontal process of the maxilla over here and in between we can see a, a four to five minor alar cartilages dispersed in the fiber fatty tissue which connects this major cartilage to the frontonasal process of maxilla so this is how uh, the anatomy and the orientation of the uh, the cartilages of the nose is exactly and you can see actually you can actually see that this is the quadrilateral or the septum, the quadrilateral cartilage, but it is deficient in a groove between these two uh, medial cruras on either side. So it is nothing but a notch which forms the tip of the nose actually and that is how we come to know that this is the anatomy of the uh, nasal cartilages you can actually see that this is the tip of the nose over here and this is the area of the philtrum over here and just above we can have the tip of the nose over here which is a deficient area filled by the cartilaginous tissues that is the fiber fatty tissue as well and this is uh, the orientation so i guess this is pretty much about the anatomy of the uh, nasal cartilages and now the bony anatomy in detail the the insertion and the origin of the different uh, bony parts of the bony septum I'll be covering in the next video but uh, this video I wanted to show you guys about the clear concepts of the the cartilaginous part of the nasal septum now the one thing in last I want to talk about is the the Jacobson's area the Jacobson's organ as well now uh, for that, I want to show you a few photographs. Now, as you can see, this is just a basic rough anatomy of the uh, the cartilaginous as well as the bony anatomy. So you can see that the nasal spine the, of the frontal bone, the crest of the nasal bone, uh, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, the vomer bone, then the palatine bone posteriorly, then the... Uh, the crest of the maxilla and the crest of the palatine bone these are the structures along with the rostrum of sphenoid that form the proper bony anatomy of the nasal septum so all these structures forms the bony anatomy and uh, the cartilaginous structure is formed by the the septal cartilage which is also called as the quadrilateral cartilage which i just showed you in the 3d model and this was the area the membranous septum which was deficient in the area in between the two medial cruders so if i can show you the area here right now this was the area where there was deficiency of the cartilage and this was the uh the quadrilateral cartilage so if i can show you properly again this was the area of the cartilage and this was the area where there was deficiency of this thing and that we can see the place where you can see the membranous septum in the midline this we also have a columnar septum and this is how along with the other cartilages we form the entire anatomy of the nasal structures the nasal bony and the cartilagin structures so this is like really important to have the anatomy because if you are a rhinoplastic surgeon or you want to become one the anatomy of these cartilages is really important because without them you cannot be a good rhinoplastic surgeon so uh coming on to the jacobson's uh the vomero Jacob, the Jacobson's uh, area. Uh, I'm going to show you something. So, 
this is just the same orientation of the uh, cartilages in different orientation and different styles so yeah i want to show you this photograph as you can see over here the olfactory epithelium is near the skull base area but there's something called as the vomero nasal organ now this vomero nasal organ lies in the anterior inferior anterior one third part of the nasal septum right now you can see this is a vomer bone right there and that's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and um, this is the quadrilateral cartilage the place where the vomer bone uh, attaches to the, the the quadrilateral cartilage in a septum anterior inferiorly is a place where you can see the vomero nasal organ and that's the same place or nearby a few millimeters away you can see the vomero nasal ligament or you can see the vomero nega the vomero nasal attachments which attach this vomer bone to the quadrilateral cartilage so this vomero nasal organ is actually an organ of sense of smell which is an accessory organ not the primary but the accessory organ which is concerned for the pheromone receptors and the uh, sense of smell for certain chemical substances so in humans its its presence is still a debate we're not for sure if it is present or not but there have been few cases where previous surgeons have uh, found the area on the septum known to be as the uh, jacobson's organ as you can see this is the patient's right nasal cavity and um, this is the septum there's a little bit of buckling on the septum over here you can you can see the white arrow pointing out towards the uh, the Jacobson's organ. Now, what exactly is this Jacobson's organ or the vomero nasal organ is that it's a blind sac and it has got a tube and opening where it is connected to all the sensory fibers and acts as the chemoreceptor and the receptor for pheromone activity. So if you see something like this in your nasal septum, it could be, it could be that the patient is having the exposed uh, the vomero nasal organ or the Jacobson's organ. Okay, so this is the the vomero nasal organ on histopathology, where you can see a high field power. Uh, in a case of 17th gestational week, a human fetus with ciliated esthesiocytes, that's the cells concerned with the olfaction, supporting cells and the ganglionic cells. So it's still a debate that but few patients they have been diagnosed to have the presence of the vomero nasal organ as well so something we should know about all ENT surgeons should know about is the uh, jacobson's organ as a accessory organ of sense of smell so i think we covered up the anatomy of the nasal cartilages and um, pretty well and the anatomy of the complete nasal cartilage septum is over and if uh, if you have any doubt in this video you can let me in my you can, you can let me know in my message section or you can leave a comment behind on the comment section below so i'll see you in the next lecture where i'll talk about the anatomy of the bony septum as well as my next lecture will be on the uh, the complete anatomy and the attachments of the sphenoid bone so till then see you next time thank you guys